Hi everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of City and Girls uh, Carpentry and Joinery course. I want to be doing another video. This is video number 60 in our series. And today we're going to look at the roofing square. Now the roofing square is a very simple uh, metal um, square. It has um, a long blade and a, 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 narrow, an, an, and a shorter blade. The shorter blade tends to be much thicker and the longer blade tends to be much thinner. And um, as you can see, what you're able to do is to get two pieces of straight material, timber, and put them um, across the, 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 uh, the square and put some bolts through. I, I, on mine, I use um, some, some bolts with some um, wing nuts so that I'm able to just tighten it when it's in place. Now, this drawing here is a little bit difficult for you to see, but I'm trusting that you're going to be able to pinpoint various aspects what happens is that when you lay one of your uh, rafters on a woodworking bench uh, or on a site table then you're then able to work out the true length now the the first thing that you have to do is to mark up to the pitch line now the pitch line is um, a, a line an imaginary line but you can draw it in pencil on the wood uh, about a third of the way when i was a boy it was always a quarter of the way but they talk now about it being a third of the way up the timber uh, i i prefer actually to still do it at a quarter of the distance i find that taking a third of all of the thickness of the timber out of uh, a rafter uh, very much reduces its strength whereas a quarter um, to me, to my mind um, is much more uh, realistic so what you do is you draw a line, it's a, say a quarter of the way across the timber, all the way along, that's this dotted line, that's the pitch line. And then that is actually where you work out the true length. Now notice you've got your uh, roofing square laid out on the timber, which is great. Um, and, and you'll notice it's set out in such a way that you get all of your pitch lines and you get, all, you get all of your plumb lines, I should say, and you get all of your seat cuts. So as this uh, is resting at the side of the timber, it can then be moved along. If you move it to this end, you're able to get this plumb cut. If you slide it up to this end, where you've got the, um, uh, where, where you've got the, um, the wall plate, which is this little piece here that marks out um, the bird's mouth, that, that's a, uh, that uh, roofing square is able to give you the seat cut and the plumb cut. It's also able to give you the plumb cut for the end of the eaves. Okay, so this is just basically how you work it out. And um, in the City and Guilds book, there's page after page after page showing you how to do every little operation. It probably is fairly intuitive. Once you've got one in your hand and you begin to understand the concept of uh, the overall um, rise and the overall um, the overall run, then it becomes a very simple matter to use a uh, roofing square. There is one thing that needs to be just um, uh, noted at the very top, where you when when you get in your true length, uh, the true length is to the very to, to the very center okay of the of the uh, the pitch line and also it actually is half of the thickness of the ridge board okay so that's how you measure you me and of course if you put a big ridge board across it you'll immediately see that with the width you need to have um, extra um, there needs to be something cut off to enable it to be uh, to the center um, of the ridge board that's very very important um, now down here I've also drawn another thing uh, one of the things that comes out of doing um, roof and especially roofs that have a hip on it is that you have um, a hip rafter now the hip rafter you'll notice that um, all the jack rafters will be in a straight line so they're all straight cuts but the hip itself has what's known as a dihedral angle so this hip, it doesn't just have sharp points. You don't fix your button to just a sharp point. Rather, what you do is you plane an angle down on your hips, and this enables the, um, the battens to sit flush and to sit straight 
on the timber and this of course means that when you're cutting um, your timber originally you will mark to this central point but you will then plane away to enable this to hold the buttons flat i notice in the book it it, it takes um page after page of uh, photographs diagrams explaining how that is to be done um but there we are it's 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 a, a very simple operation um and actually setting out a rafter like this is not at all difficult it's one of those things which people just um need to actually do two or three times to enable them to understand or what you do if you're an apprentice is you just work alongside somebody else that's doing the same job and this will immediately give you um, all the help that you're going to need now the next picture on the next page is something which uh, may be familiar to you i'm not sure it's how uh, how it's possible to lengthen roof timbers you don't just cut them off and stick a nail in what you do is you make this special cut it's a cut there which is always much less than 90 degrees so that it actually cuts into the wood and then it comes all the way down and then it steps up and then goes all the way down again and in this middle part because those are actually an, a little undercut so they can dig into the wood so when you put a wedge in the center it spreads the two apart and makes it super tight and then the next thing to do is to put on some fish plates now fish plates are very simple things they're just long plates of steel on both sides generally galvanized and long bolts are put through to bolt it together and this actually becomes a super strong um, um, timber rafter okay or a timber beam uh, the next thing to think about when we're looking at roofs is to ask ourselves about um, how long you're going to need your access equipment. Access equipment can be expensive and so um, knowing exactly how long you're going to need it, um, how, what type you're going to need to use, also how many people are going to be using the platform and also the type of ac access and egress um, such as ladders that you're going to need. You also need to know about what the ground is going to be like and what the weather conditions are going to be like and whether there is likely to be passers-by um, or pedestrians in the vicinity because of course roof work is something which um, can involve timber falling you know just off cuts just falling when they're cut um, now there's a long um, a long diagram and lots of pictures and photographs in the city of Gills book about how to erect a gable ended roof uh, suffice to say that this is a very 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 simple process but it's something better done than talked about and certainly better th than ever drawn and uh, the important thing is to be able to erect the two rafters so that they touch in the center what i tend to do is i work out the overall height of the roof and i stand up a single um, piece of timber each end and i put the um, I put the ridge board on top of that timber and I might even just temporarily just pin it to hold it in place and then I then put the rafters on and if I have to raise them up or drop them down a tiny bit that's good um, but that's how I basically erect um, a roof if there's no gable end then the first piece that I put up I'll then have to put a brace on both sides just to stop it moving and once you've stopped it moving then you're away um, one of the things that can be done on a roof like this is, is to use um, intermediate pieces of um, plywood. So, for example, at the side of the rafter, you might put um, uh, some button. Um, and then once you've got two of the rafters up together, what you can then do is you can just put that bit of plywood in, just pin it into place, and that stops them racking. They then are held vertical. So that's how you actually uh, erect a simple gable end roof. And um, doing a hip end roof is very similar. Uh, the, the actual roof is erected in the normal way. The only difference is that there will be a hip rafter. Now hip rafters are a particular uh, thing that people find or the struggle over. Um, the important thing to remember is this, is that um, it's a much larger piece of timber 
but the, working out the actual um, the actual pitch line is a, is a very simple thing, just the same as as normal, and uh, it's it's better actually done just in place uh, the first few times. Trying to work it out mathematically um, is a very difficult thing to do, and of course you've got the timber and you've got the place where it's going to be. You literally put it into place and put a mark at the top and a mark at the bottom, and from there you can do all of the the working out. The jack rafters can be a little bit tricky to fix. Um, that's because of the long cut at the top of each jack rafter. But just remember this: when you cut out, if you take a jack rafter and you cut out a slice to fit it on the right hand side, the piece that you cut off can then be turned around. To be fitted on the left hand side so every single cut cuts two jack rafters at the same time and again this is a very simple process it's something with a little bit of knack and a little bit of experimenting that you can become exceptionally accurate at doing now there's lots and lots of calculations that people go into and there's lots of things of that nature i don't bother with those calculations i just do it literally in place and fit it. I use um, sliding bevels, or I use the um, roofing square, or I use the speed square. One of the, one of each of these methods. It's a very simple thing. When you're doing a um, when you're doing a hip roof, or when you're doing a cut roof, nobody's going to rush you. You know this is new. You may have never done one before. You may be entirely alone doing it, or you might just be working with your mentor. But the important thing to do. Is to take your time and learn these various methods tend to concentrate i tend to concentrate on the real time full size uh, modeling of the roof i find that that's far better doing long calculations and doing geometry is just quite tedious anyway we look forward to catching up with you on our next episode where we will be talking about trimming roof structures for openings so catch you then Bye for now, all the best.